Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to do an updated concealed carry video. Today it is November 16th of 2023. So we're right in the middle of winter. We're getting to a point where you can start carrying a lot more stuff on you without it showing and being totally obvious that someone's carrying a gun. You might be thinking to yourself, Reno, you're from California. You don't carry a gun. Guns are illegal. You've never seen a gun. Well, um, allegedly. So today we're gonna to be doing a video talking about what I carry, why I have chosen the gear that I've chosen, I've switched some stuff around when it comes to belts, holsters, lights on my EDC guns and whatnot, and we'll get into that. I'm gonna to try to make this video as short as possible because I know that you appreciate that. If you appreciate this video, use the links down in the description to help support the channel and like, subscribe, all that jazz. I'm currently suing the state of California in two different lawsuits, one of which is to change the handgun roster, which is why I was able to actually go and pick up a SIG P365 just recently, just in time for me to not really carry it because it's winter and I can carry a much bigger gun. But if you enjoy being able to get new handguns, Boland versus Bonta put on by the CRPA is why we have that. I'm a plaintiff in that lawsuit. I'm also a plaintiff in a lawsuit that is challenging the CCW restrictions that would basically make it unable to carry anywhere in the state of California. So if you have a CCW in the state of California, and you want to be able to carry more than just sidewalks or in your home, go ahead and uh, like, subscribe, all that jazz. So I'm gonna get into some of the basic stuff first. So give you a frame of reference. In winter time, you know, you can basically carry anything. It doesn't really look like I'm carrying a gun. I am six foot two, 215 pounds, 220 pounds. Right now I'm bulking. So I'm a larger person, but I'm not quite super large by any means. I'm a normal sized person. Just to give you a frame of reference, if you're a smaller person or a woman, things might be a little bit different. If you're much larger than me, you might be able to carry more or you might have to carry things a little bit differently. But I typically always carry with me a few basic things like a knife, a flashlight, pepper spray, my keys, obviously, which then I put a little air tag on and a chapstick. I'm running through these really quickly carrying an iPhone with a little magnetic uh, charging battery backup, which I think is super convenient because it just pops right off, pop on, pop off, boom. It works with most cases if they're not too thick. My case was just a little broken, so I need to get a new one. I also carry AirPods because it's nice to be able to listen to music. My wallet is a very minimalist wallet. Gonna try to not show you my address and whatnot with a little AirTag in it. The knife that I carry is a CRKT. I believe this is the CEO. What I like about this knife is it's very slim. I mean, you can see how small that is. I have normal sized fingers, skinny fingers, I guess. And uh, it's pretty thin. It flicks open really easy. It's got some sort of ball bearing mechanism that makes it very easy to just flick open. Very minimalist, easy to fit into your pocket. So you're not filling it up with a whole bunch of other junk, which I know a lot of you probably do like myself. The flashlight that I carry, I've carried this for basically the past, I think since 2021. This is the Surefire Stiletto. I'm not sure if this is the Pro. I believe this actually is the Surefire Stiletto Pro. Now this light has a little clicky switch on the back, which if I press, yeah, that's pretty bright. I think this has a thousand lumens, not the best candela. It's a nice floody light, if you can see in the back there. Got a decent hot spot, pretty good for just looking around using a flashlight for flashlight stuff. Not the brightest, craziest candela handheld light on the market, but since it has a slim profile, it makes it a lot easier to carry in a front pocket. In addition to that rear button, which again, very bright, full power. It also has a button up here, which has multiple different modes that you can cycle through. Now, if you're on a certain mode, this is the dimmest mode, which you can't even really see. If you press that back button, it goes full power immediately, which is pretty nice. It allows you to have a, a light that you can use if your firearm does not have a flashlight or just if you want to be really bright and blind someone, you can. But if you need to just look around something without blinding yourself, you have this very low lumen admin light, I guess. It's USB rechargeable which I find very convenient. Chapstick, self-explanatory. AirPods, nice to listen to music. I use an iPhone, so it connects very easily. Keys with a little AirTag holder on it. That's really the only interesting thing about my keys because sometimes I forget where I put my keys in the house, pull up my phone, it rings, I find my keys, easy peasy. Same thing with my wallet, little AirTag holder. I'll have some of these linked down in the description. If not, it's pretty simple. Amazon, you find that stuff easy. Now, if you carry a gun, which 
probably a lot of you do based on watching this video, I recommend that you carry pepper spray as well. Pepper spray, specifically this one, is a pretty good brand. This is from Palm. This is a little pocket clip. You can basically just carry it in your front pocket. You flip that up and I'm not gonna press it, not gonna test it. If you wanna see me do that test, let me know down in the description. I buy a lot of these things, got a lot of them just laying around in various compartments in my car, my wife's car, various bags, various drawers. I got a lot of these. So if you wanna see me test it, drop a comment down below. Maybe I'll do a YouTube short or something like that. But pepper spray is very convenient to have because there's a lot of situations in life where you might find yourself saying, hey, I shouldn't shoot this person but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to physically manhandle them. Pepper spray is very convenient for situations where you don't think lethal force is a legal or ethical option. Whether you choose to do it or not, that's up to you. This is not legal advice, I'm not a lawyer, but pepper spray is a good in-between from strong words to literally shooting someone. There's a whole lot that can happen that doesn't necessarily need to be solved with a gun. Sometimes, I don't like, or I don't have the ability to, especially in the summer, again, this is an EDC video for the winter, but sometimes I don't always have the ability to carry all that stuff on me. So I have this little fanny pack, which I know fanny packs aren't the coolest, but um, shut up. <laughs> I carry this usually like over my shoulder like this, um, just like as a sling bag. And this allows me to put all of this junk in there if I wanted to. Obviously, I could utilize this front pocket to make things a little bit better organized, but you could fit a good amount of stuff in here, but it's not so overtly large. As a scale reference, I guess here is a Gorilla Mind energy drink, which you can get at the link in the description. Uh, yeah, use code Reno, save 10%. But yeah, it's not that big, but it fits anything that I would typically need in it. So that's typically what I carry on me. Now, the part that you probably actually wanted to watch this video for, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, is the gun. Now, right now, I also, I'm gonna have to talk about belts in a second, but we'll talk about that at the end because it's probably the most important in my opinion. This is typically what I'm carrying. This is a Glock 19 Gen 5. Right now I have the dagger slide on it. This is a Gen 3 slide, but it does work, interestingly enough. Gen 5 frame, Gen 3 slide, TLR 7A light. The light is activated by either your index finger, which I don't recommend, or your support hand thumb on either side. You click it once and it's on, or if you press and hold and let go, it's momentary. Personally, not a big fan of momentary. Just turn it on, turn it off. This is a very easy light to manipulate. Boom, boom, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, on, off. You can do that, but under recoil, what's typically gonna happen if you're doing that momentary, it's gonna move off just slightly. And also, this is not how you normally shoot a gun during the daytime. Normally, you're gonna be up here. So what I do is when I come up, I draw, and it's just that little bit of difference. It's just, and I'm back here before I really even get on target. So you wanna shoot like you normally would, it's the only difference is that your thumb does this little boop. That's it, you just give it a little boop. That's it. Stock internals, TLR7, Hollow Sun, I believe this is the 407 A3 X2. It's a Hollow Sun with just the single red dot in the center. I carry it in a T-Rex Arms holster. This is one of their new ones. I've carried in a holster like this for as long as they've been making these, which I think is over two years at this point. Has a little bit of flex. From the factory, the clips are adjusted a little bit differently. I move the clips up because the way that I carry on my body at appendix, the way my body is shaped, I can get this gun a little bit lower down. From the factory, the gun is just way too high up. And when it's way too high up, it prints way more because your stomach naturally has, even if you've got abs, has a little bit of shape to it, or at least mine does. So when I have the gun that's riding too high up, up here, you know, it's either here from the factory, it was set like up here, like an extra inch. And that was causing the gun to just push out against my body just ever so slightly. Now with a sweatshirt, it really doesn't matter, but I don't want my position of the gun to change from summer to winter. What changes really is just, you know, during the winter, I can carry with that big mag. 
During the summer, I'll carry a spare mag like that. This is a Glock 19 again with a spare Glock 17 mag. So I just swap out the amount of rounds that would typically be on tap. Now, if I was gonna be carrying with something not as big as a sweatshirt, but I could still get away with it, you know, I could just put in the Glock 17 mag, sticks out just a little bit, but when it's winter time and I can get away with it based on what I'm wearing, I can get away with a 22 round magazine with one in the chamber with a backup 22 round magazine. It's a lot of ammunition. Is it overkill? Possibly. Does it bother me any more than carrying with just the flush fit and the Glock 17 spare? No, not really, because the difference between what you just saw and this in terms of overall weight isn't much. And they don't dig into me anymore because I carry a good holster that's set up properly to me with a good belt. Now, the belt that I typically rotate between, the one that I've been carrying for a long time, but has been less of a daily driver for me, has been the Core Essentials. Now, these are the Core Essentials belts. The way they work is they have this little ratcheting system on the inside, so you can adjust it, and then just you press this little button here. Boom. Sorry. Like that, to loosen it up. To tighten it down, you just put the belt on, crank it down to wherever you see fit. When you get this belt, it's gonna be super long, like super, super long. You then cut it based on the length markers that are on this little belt. You cut it to your size. I would say cut less at first. Test it out, see how much excess you got, put your gun on, take your gun off, see how it fits, because you can always cut off more, but you can never uncut it, just like your foreskin. Anyways, the Core Essential belts are a good option. I think I used to have a coupon code, but I'm not sure anymore. If I do, if I can find that, or if I can talk to them and get a new one, um, I will leave that linked down in the description below. I've been using these belts since like 2018. This one specifically, I think I have had since 2019, like this specific belt and buckle. And it's in pretty good shape. They look like normal belts. They have a variety of different colors. They have some belts that look more tactical, like gun people belts, to where if someone that was into the gun world saw you carrying and saw you wearing one of these belts, they would know. But we're nerds on the internet. We don't exist in real life. We've never been outside. Now, the belt that I've been carrying much more often with lately has been this belt, the Hunter Constantine belt. What I like about this belt, well, what I like about the core belt is if I'm gonna be on a long drive or I'm gonna be sitting down for a long period of time, I can basically just be sitting down with the belt tight as I want it and then just press this discreetly, loosen it up a couple of clicks. Then when I stand up, I just click it back down, ratchet it back down to the very, very specific. Every little one of these little ridges is a position that it can actually be adjusted to. So there's a lot of fine tuning that you can do with this. Now the Hunter Constantine belt gives you that same type of adjustment in a different method, or it gives you that same operational envelope, as some people like to say, in a much different way. Now, this belt is designed for appendix carry only, I believe. I'm not sure if you could really even carry this in a non-appendix carry position. Now, the front of the belt is right here, and the front of this belt has a rigid metal piece in it that is reinforced. So this sits over the front of your body. That little metal gives it that structure, that rigidity that you need in order for the belt to hold the gun to your body. If it's too floppy, the gun's just gonna be wobbling around. If it's too tight, it's gonna be super uncomfortable. This still has a little bit of give to it, but it holds it where it wants to be. The way you put it on and off, you have this little clip, and then you have these little loops, and they just try to get a good shot of that. Boom, just clicks in. There's a second one here for if you want it a little bit tighter. What I do is I adjusted this little tri-glide because the back side is stretchy. Front half, rigid. Back half, stretchy, adjustable. It's gonna adjust on the fly. It's going to allow your belt to be tight, but also loosen up if for whatever reason you ate a real big meal or if you're sitting in an awkward position. It's got give, but in the back. It's tight in the front, loose in the back, just like your mom. 
I'm sorry. It was too easy. Just like your mom, I'm, so I'm sorry. Okay, so the Hunter Constantine belt, another good option. I've been carrying with this pretty much every day. The way you put it on is like any other, other belt, but you thread the rigid part through first. Get that through your belt loops. I'm gonna pull my shirt up so I can just see and show this easily. So I got it on the first loop here. I put my gun on. Boom, and if for whatever reason I felt like this was too loose, like the gun was pushing away from my body, I could always go to that second loop and immediately have it just a little bit tighter. You can adjust that tri-glide however you want, but the quick, simple adjustments are done like that. I can technically do this discreetly, but the core essentials absolutely wins when it comes to a discreet adjustment. The Hunter Constantine belt is made by cool a cool guy. I like his content on social media. I have no direct relation with him, but he seems like a nice guy. The belts are very well thought out. A lot of people that I know that are really into concealed carrying and carry large firearms use this belt to great success. So that's currently what I'm carrying. I guess the only thing that I missed is the uh, ammo, ammo that I'm currently using. These are the Norma. MXT, Maximum Expansion Hollow Points or something like that. Um, yeah, there's no real rhyme or reason. I just have a ton of it because last year Route 66 gave me some, so I have it. Which, if you're in San Bernardino area, check out Route 66 Shooting Sport Park. I highly recommend it. But yeah, just a simple little video. That's the ammo that I use. I carry a full size or a Glock 19, which I call a full size gun because it's pretty much a full size gun with a uh, big mags, light knife, flashlight, pepper spray, chapstick, the basics, and then a gun, you know. Let me know what you think down below. I'm interested, what's the smallest gun you carry? What's the largest gun you carry? Let me know in the, in the comments down below. You guys know the drill, have fun, be safe, stay dangerous, peace.